trippin', trip, trip. Came through trippin', trip, trip. Came through trippin', trip, trip. Diamonds on my wrist, they trippin', ice. Came through trippin', trip, trip. Came through trippin', trip, trip. Came through trippin', trip, trip. Diamonds on my wrist, they trippin', ice. Came through trippin', trip, trip. Came through trippin', trip, trip. Came through trippin', trip, trip. Diamonds on my wrist, they trippin', ice. Came through trippin', trip, trip. Came through trippin', trip, trip. Came through trippin', trip, trip. Diamonds on my wrist, they trippin'. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to episode seven of Drips in the Office. Now, normally I'm joined by John and Warren, but he's out in Jamaica, Jamaican me jealous. <laughs> okay. We can cut that. Oh, I'm uh, in the right place. You're in the right spot. <laughs> so we brought in a very special guest, blind Mike Geary. Mike, you, Mike. Mike, you. Mike, thank you for joining me on this fine evening. It's an honor. I remember you said once on the show that you are a massive fan and epi- listen every week. So yes. it was the perfect fit. Thank you for joining us. Oh, the, the honor is all on this side of the screen, my friend. It's, it's it's a privilege to be here. It's very exciting. And for the viewers out there, like I said before this, I have never hosted before. And in my dry runs in the shower this morning, I was not very good at it. <laughs> so... Let's hope uh, we'll hope things pick up from here. And well, you kind you've got yourself you've got yourself in a nice spot where like really the only failure of this show would be is if you were like dynamite, like if you were yeah. off the walls crazy. That's the only way people would be like, "What the fuck is going on here?" You know, it's true. The overall premise of the show is set up for success here, which just exactly. being very boring. And I have some pretty pretty exciting topics today to run through. So um, okay. buckle up, everyone. But in honor of John. Before we get started, let me say this. I'll use this quote every time. Even if you listened to KMS this week and sat through all of Menor's terrible call, honestly atrocious, oh. this will be the most boring thing you listen to all week. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you. I'm glad I nailed that one. And uh, John, like I said, John's in Jamaica. Um, shout out to him. He unfortunately had to make a little pit stop to the ER today. His son jumped off a chair, uh, and smashed his head and had to get some stitches. Now, this wasn't in the script that I sent you yesterday, Mike, but have you had any instances in your life where you've had to get stitches or anything of that sort? Because I do, but I'm gonna let you go first. Never been to the hospital for anything, really. The only time I've been to uh like an urgent care was i (laughs) fell down a flight of stairs and thought like i couldn't move my arm at all and i've never broken a bone or sprained anything or and so i i couldn't move my arm at all so i assumed i'd broken or torn something and then as i was sitting in the waiting room it kind of started to like loosen up a little bit and i was like i don't need to be here anymore (laughs) yeah i was there Three weeks ago, I was uh, a couple months ago, actually, I was running around my backyard and I stepped in a hole and like I thought I broke my foot. But when I got to the urgent care, I realized I was totally fine, but I played it up. So they gave me some ibuprofen, which I now have if I want to get wacky. Yeah. So they're hot. They're extra strength. So that's pretty exciting. That's good stuff. And I once was on a trampoline and my dad double bounced me. I did a butt blaster and I went backwards and smashed my head on the springs leading to 10 stitches, lots of blood. So shout out to John's kid who seems to be really going through it right now. Uh, I hear I hear a lot of kids don't have trampolines now because of the, like the legal wranglings that come with it. There's a lot of lawsuits involved. Correct. And if you keep this under your hat, I'll let you in on a little secret. I got one, but right. it's a huge risk because uh, your home insurance might not cover you anymore if they find out you had one. So when I was growing up, my dad dug a hole and we put it underground, which is pretty cool. It looked like we were bouncing, like just we could jump really high because it was ground level. But uh yeah, no. Fun. So I'm I'm playing it high <laughs> and tight right now. Um like yeah, it. so I hope John's son's doing better. But we'll trudge on. As always, we want to get into I want to get into parking. It's kind of it's the premise of this show, this, that and CPAP machines and breast pumps. Now sure. Mike, you are a big utilizer of Uber, correct? Yes, tremendous. Yeah. Now, do you, do you ever dabble in Lyft? I never have. Uh, really? For whatever reason, yeah. Alba will, if we're going into the city or something, sometimes she'll say, like, oh, let me check what the Lyft price is right now because the mm, price is surge. different. 
I never, I never do that. I've been a loyal Uber man. I, when people were calling them racist or whatever it was years ago, I stuck by them. I've never wavered on that. When I find a brand I like, I stick with it. I respect that. And as a gentleman who used to be an Uber driver, who you're talking to, it was an exciting time in my life. I can relate. I crashed my car. I rear-ended someone on the highway, and that ruined my Uber career. My, my The points on my record would no longer allow me to drive for Uber. Oh, but I, I was see still... you being a chatty Uber driver. Am I right? <laughs> yep, yep. That's later. Yeah, That's later in my it. topics list. Okay, yep, yeah, I want to. I want to go into that because I love All it. Right. <laughs> uh, but if we want to tie this back to parking, one of now, if you ever go to an airport or you go to kind of like a busy area of sorts. That's mm-hmm. actually a place where myself and the parking industry we make a good chunk of ch- chunk of coin. We have partnered with Uber and Lyft across the nation. And Mike, I know what you're thinking. You're like, doesn't isn't Uber and Lyft like the boogeyman for parking? Sure. It is, but it isn't. We are the ones that manage those little satellite locations that they have kind of where you get picked up for the airport. It's really? a huge moneymaker. It's a necessity for Uber and Lyft because if you're in a high traffic area, you can't have 50 Ubers just sitting out there, you know, kind of clogging up the line. So they, sure call, the not, big, yeah. they call the big guy and we rent them out a lot, you know, charge a little vig on the side. It's a huge, huge revenue maker for the parking industry. Now, I'm so, sure you utilize some of those. Yeah. So Uber pays, so like at Logan Airport, it's a, it's a hall. Mm-hmm. You have to walk, you know, th- oh. three miles to get to like the Uber pickup spot. So your company basically charges Uber to use that area? Yeah, we'll, we'll charge like a flat. It, it, most I companies, never realized that. That's very interesting. Most companies do it, but we have a pretty good partnership with them. We'll charge them a flat rate to use that lot. Like if it's a lot that we manage or the, the client manages and we control it for them. Plus we'll charge like a hit per pickup and per drop off. And it's usually like a dollar, dollar 25, something along those lines. So there's been a partnership and it's, it's funny too, because prior to COVID, the Uber and the Lyft breakout were the parking industry's first version of COVID-19. Now, not as severe. No one died or no one had to get booster shots that never never worked. Shut up, Biden. Um, (laughs) But... Uh, when we had, you know, if you if you were going to a hotel, if you were going to, a, you know, a show, you're parking somewhere before mm-hmm. Uber and Lyft, you just had to drive. We collected your money. Boom. On your way. We were booming. But then Uber right. and Lyft came pick up, drop off. It really kicked us in the tail. So now that we've partnered with those fine folks at Uber and Lyft, it's a healthy balance and it's a healthy marriage. That's very nice. I like to hear that because you yeah. do worry about uber and lyft kind of taking some of those businesses like i mean do you think of taxi cabs like those guys are oh, out on their see ass you later. Stuff, you know? yeah those guys are toast i mean i i would take cabs sometimes this is probably right at the the real start of uber taking over is uh sometimes i would get off the train in braintree when i lived in braintree and i'd get off the that red line stop and like on a rainy day or something I, it was about a mile and a half walk i had home it was, the weather was bad. I didn't feel like walking. So sometimes I would take a taxi cab. And in instances like that, it was nice because you didn't have to call and wait for an Uber. You could just walk outside, hail, hail a cab. Those situations aren't around anymore, really. It's disappointing. No, they're really not. And cab to Ubers and Lyfts, they live off customer reviews, too. If you get a low right. customer score, you're totally toast. Those Uber dri- those cab drivers, they don't give a fuck. They'll just they'll let you know how it is. They'll they'll be they'll be rude, beeping on the horn. They don't care about your customer reviews. But I will say, now, when you take an Uber to the studio, I don't know how far away you live. It's probably like 20, 30 bucks, something like that. Uh, yeah, sure. That's a good range. If a ca- In a cab, would probably be like 40 or 50. So cabs have never, they, I don't think they've caught up to the pricing of Uber. It probably doesn't work for their model. That's another topic for another episode. I got to jot that one down because that could be dynamite, looking at the prices yeah. of Uber's lifts compared to cabs and limos and liveries, the whole nine. Absolutely. But, yeah, no, it, it's it's the cab cabs a dying industry right now, and we've tried to work with cab drivers in the same way, but they just don't want to give up the dollar, which I totally understand. Um, but one thing I want to pivot to right now, Mike, that you chatted on a little bit earlier, is yes. me as an Uber driver or Uber drivers in general. Now, I think you've mentioned on the show before, you don't seem like a real chatty Kathy in the backseat of an Uber. Not at all, unless it's so. Here's what I think would happen if I had you as an Uber driver: is you would kind of hear exactly what just unfolded here. You'd get your own little podcast if you were lucky yeah. enough to be in an Uber pool with the two of us. Yep. Because what usually happens if I'm talking in an Uber, it's 
purely because the guy has the driver has been you know unrelenting and he'll say uh you know well, where are you heading or something like that or nice weather we're having oh, and I'll, I love that. I'll, I'll give him a response but then i'll kind of put the headphone back in but if he doesn't uh, stop if he asks a follow-up headphones coming off and i'm saying all right we're getting into this my friend. i'm <laughs> putting my bib on and i'm ready to dine you're in for the ride you're in for i'm the absolutely ride. In. that then Literally. i'm asking him how long have you been driving for uber okay. i'm asking him the difference between uber and lyft all the all the classic go-to's is what i'm resorting to that is my favorite line when i'm in the backseat of an uber it's just a simple conversation starter like how long have you been driving for Uber for? And generally that that starts with, oh, about two years, but before this, and then you can go into their whole life story. I was that guy. It was like cash cab, but like very annoying for most of the most. There's of the no customers. surprise at the end. I actually had terrible customer reviews for that reason. I remember that. Oh, I was really? just, I got like too talkative and all that stuff, but <laughs> damn if I care. The check's still cash. Now, let me ask you this as a, let me get the driver's perspective here. Mm -hmm. and this is another go-to of mine in an uber but uh the other night i had a horrendous driver terrible Ooh. and uh for, for a multitude of reasons and i was the whole time i'm thinking i gotta give this guy a bad review and then when i get home and i go to do it mm -hmm. i can't bring myself to because he was not a nice guy if he was an asshole yeah he was just he was a shitty driver really chatty it was it was, it was a tough ride but as i was thinking about it i was like this guy probably lives on these reviews five stars stuff. but then to me i think i'm not doing my civic duty because that's an injustice to the next rider you know well i think that's a double-edged sword because it's an injustice to the next rider but for me like i would i would want that guy like maybe if he wasn't a good driver i wouldn't want him because i get sick but if he was just yeah, yeah, yapping my ear off all day like i'll i'll take that a hundred times well out of i didn't want to throw this element in here because i know you guys don't like to get too controversial uh -oh. didn't, have a, didn't have a great grasp on the language that's difficult so there's That's two tough. yeah yeah i I've, i take that as a challenge so like i enjoy that you try to kind of break down the, the barrier and like a lot of times they don't understand what you're saying so they just laugh so it's a bit of sure. a confidence booster so yeah that's a struggle i think my biggest turn off uh in uber and lyft is the guy that's going to be on his cell phone the whole time if the driver is just chatting away on a cell phone i don't feel special I don't feel like I'm paying, you know, 30 bucks for a ride. Like I want to be, I want to be wined and dying a little bit. Um, so I just can't stand that. It's interesting. I don't really mind that. Now the first time it always confuses me. I'll hear them say something on the phone and I'll go, what's that? Exactly. I'll go, no, sorry. So that's a little, you know, embarrassing. But that uh, interaction alone, it's like, oh boy, this is, I'm buckling up for a pretty shitty ride. But then I know pressure's off. I don't have to listen to this guy. Even if he's talking to me, I don't have to listen to him now. All the pressure is off. Yeah, I think that that definitely works because you said you're you generally would like to like keep your headphones in. For me, yeah. it's a huge it's a huge letdown because I know okay. that I'm just I'm in silence for the next twenty minutes or whatever it is. But to each their own, really. One thing, and listen, if I'm cutting you off, please jump in if we want to keep going down this rabbit hole. But sure. one thing that always frustrated me about the Uber driving process: Do you know how much I'll call us we because I'm a retired Uber driver? Do you know how much mm -hmm. we make on surge pricing? Um, you're asking me like a percentage, like what percentage do you make of the extra It's term? not percentage based. This is where it gets really mm. frustrating. And this is where this, listen, I'm, I'm, we partner with Uber and Lyft, so you're not going to hear me say a bad thing about them, but I will right now. What they do is there's different levels of surges, right? So it's like, uh, it used to be when I was, when I was in the game, it was green, yellow, red, red is like friday night 10 o'clock on our way to the club to do some dancing like that sure. that's where you're hitting your red you get 25 cents for green 50 cents for yellow and a dollar for red so when uh, you're paying 60 bucks yeah that driver's only getting an extra dollar on top of his fare or and uber fare, is often making 24. an extra an extra 30 or something like that yeah if not more you go that's into the nuts. right market if you're in manhattan pff, you're looking at 100 beans right in the teeth that's crazy. Yeah, so that I, was. Go on. I, I'll tell you now. Now I'm getting my my dander up here a little bit because I, yeah. I, I recently um, uh, subscribed to Uber One because I realized <sighs> I use Uber Eats enough also where I'm like I'm paying an arm and a leg here extra for the low price of you know ten dollars a month or something, and I mm -hmm. realized how much less they charge for just food items, and then it dawns on me. 
they're just ripping us all off for no reason. And I've talked to restaurant owners that have said Uber Eats, they don't want to be on there. They have to be, or they kind of become irrelevant in their neighborhood. But it's really financially, it's almost not worth it to them to be listed on Uber Eats. No, there's there's no benefit to them. Like exactly that. I I've it's funny. I've had this conversation, and we're gonna go back to the language barrier again. I had this conversation with the local Chinese place I have down the road. Shout out the Islander. It's one of my favorite pre. Well, I'm I'm on a diet now, so I, I don't go there anymore. But pre diet, that was one of my favorite places, and they're not on any of those apps. And I asked the lady once, and we had a you know it's a tough combo just due to the barrier. But sure. she said this. She said the same thing. It's not worth it. It's not worth it for them. They have their customer bases. Now I will say. You, I, I totally understand your logic and I totally understand people's logic for upgrading, getting like the, whatever it is, Uber one for Uber eats. Yeah. I got, I got a two year old upstairs. Anytime we get takeout, it's a free 30 minutes just to coast on the free road, not get yelled at, not have to change a poopy diaper. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, so, I'd love to, the, the, the problem with me is I, I generally get it. I mean, we'll get it. Uh, me and the lady will get it for takeout here and there, but it's more often when I'm alone, I get it because I have no you know real transportation. That's fair. No, totally. It makes all the sense in the world. One thing we started doing recently rabbit hole after rabbit hole tonight mike one thing we started doing recently is i think it's called like go put not go puff but they it's they deliver your groceries for you okay so we signed up for the year 99 dollars. get this so th this makes my wheels turn on kind of like the numbers behind all of it the hundred dollars 99 dollars you you get so you get free delivery and you just have to tip the driver you also get a fitbit and a free year subscription to peacock so I canceled really? my Peacock, Peacock subscription. I only watch The Office on there anyway. And we got a free Fitbit. I don't know That's how they're turning a profit there because the Fitbit alone is 80 smackaroos. And then Peacock's like 15 bucks a month. It doesn't make any sense. It's gotten tremendously greedy. I remember you know, when I first moved out to the city, I would use Peapod, which is like Stop and Shop's delivery service. And I, I believe oh, all yeah. that was was $10, like a $10 delivery charge. And now you have like that's you know that's thievery. It, it would be in the, in this climate anyway. because now you have Instacart and all these things that are just gouging people. I think it is Instacart. I think we are doing Instacart. Oh, all right. Well, I didn't so, mean to bes besmirch them. I apologize. Maybe I'm gouging them though because I got a Fitbit and Peacock, and I just have to tip the driver for deliveries. So, well, you got you got to ask yourself how are they getting these sort of deals though? You know, they're not giving away their product exactly i bet that they're working with corporate fitbit and corporate fitbit's probably slipping those things for 20 30 bucks a pop and peacock's probably cutting them a deal down to five six bucks a month so yeah, well paper, i think peacock's just trying to give away get as many eyeballs on their product as they can at this point but not a great product when they got the office i was pissed because i had to sign up for it but now i don't even watch the office it's a whole it's a whole rigmarole but now i was able to cancel peacock so shout out to Instacart, I think we said, Actually, right? Is that what we have? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Instacart. Now, while we're on this, I'll pivot right to our next topic because it somewhat ties into the premise that we're talking about here. And that's something that you mentioned on the show that when you said that you loved our show so much and you've listened every week, customer sure. service. Yeah. Customer service ties into every single one of these. We were actually talking about it with the Uber driver, you know, dynamic. Uh, and especially now with the delivery driver dynamic. But do you notice, and now per, forgive me if this is insulting, do you notice that you get better customer service being, you know, kind of with when you have the cane, do people give you better customer service seeing that or do you get kind of brushed to the side? Hmm. I would say with Uber is absolutely better. Do they They're get the more, door for you? To, to, to the point where almost like I, I get a little uncomfortable because it's over the top a little bit. Like, yeah. hey, can we walk you to your door? That sort of thing. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Um, so, yeah, Uber driver is definitely like over the top nice. Uh, but I, I, I've talked about this before where um, particularly at the airport, I noticed this where it's it can be a little insulting <laughs> where it's like they'll talk to Alba on my behalf and i'm like well i'm not you know mentally challenged i'm uh, I'm, I'm blind you can we can have a conversation about how it's going to be tough for me to get through this thing um so 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 that's where it can be insulting at times but i would say overall much friendlier in person but where i want to deal with customer service more as a man who's visually impaired mm -hmm. is on the phone 
I tr- and it's very tough in a growing, uh, you know, growing more and more automated customer service world. Mm-hmm. That's become very difficult for me where I can't get people on the phone where I just want to, you know, take five minutes. Can you can you help me sign up for this or uh, buy these or whatever? And that's almost impossible now, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because every time you call somewhere, if you have a question or you need to, you have you know, about a payment or something, it's press one to get connected yeah. to this stuff. And if it, it always fucks up and you always yell, I want to talk to a representative, and it never really works. So that's mm-hmm. another another industry of customer service that's just toast, absolutely toast. You used to be able yeah. to pick up the phone. Yeah, maybe they were from India, but at least you had the conversation and you had that interaction. But now it's it's totally dead. And e- even in the parking world and John's CPAP and you know breast pump world, everything's switching over to the automation. It's not good for society and it's just not good. It's not good as a whole. But that's one thing you just said that is surprising. Being at the airport is the worst fucking experience in the world, regardless mm. of however you shake it. I would love for somebody to just speak on my behalf and be like, yeah, whatever. I don't have to deal with any of this. But I do get Number, please. Um, uh, uh, five. 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 Three. Seven. Five. Four. Again. Fall. Again. Fall. Again, fool. Sorry. Man, this shit ain't for no real, man. I get where you're coming from. It could be a little bit much. Yeah, it feels a uh, tad emasculating or dehumanizing, you know, because you're because someone like me, I'm already like uncomfortable with the fact that I need assistance. So at least talk to me about the fact that I need not, you know, who you think my handler is. Um, but, but oh, overall I'll take it cause it does, you know, expedite the process. Yeah, that's fair. I, I would, I would agree with that. I'll, I'll, I, I, this is where I'm stumbling. I, I do this once a show where I, I just think of a phrase in my head that I'm trying to say, and it just doesn't click. So I think just we're talking just talking about, kind give of me a hint. Like, I was trying to say, I think I agree with that wholeheartedly. Okay. That was it. Right. That was it. I found it. I usually find it at some point, but it takes a minute. Um, now, I was going to use the line, but I, I don't want to use. It. I was going to say, "Mike, where can the people find you?" But I'm not going to do that because I think I think anybody that's listening to this kind of knows who you are, unless we have listeners from all over the world, which I highly doubt. Um, well, blindmike.net if you want to uh, if you want to give that a search. I actually, I'm, I've been a subscriber for, I think, two years now. And listen, I'm a registered Craigophile. Wow. That's, <laughs> I'll tell you. That. It's a rare I'll tell you that. He actually, you know what's funny? His kids go to daycare with my kid. Same daycare. Oh, really? Well, yeah, I see him in the parking lot every day, taking pictures of him going in. Okay. So I figured, well, that's, yeah, I, figured, I don't know if that's where his kids, yeah. That's, I, I wrote that down. I was pretty fired <laughs> up about that one. <laughs> That's no, but I do like. I actually do like Craig on the show. I maybe we won't repeat that, but um, now that That's leads good. that leads right into. I want to talk about you a little bit because you are the guest of honor. You're like right. you're like John and Warren on steroids. No, okay, John and Warren, have fun in Jamaica. What has life been like after Lauren Compton? Because <laughs> I never disagree with Kirk. Sure, but I disagree with Kirk. I thought it was a fantastic episode, and she looked great. What a looker! Woof. Oh, sure, I understand what he was saying about the yeah. and i i had my preconceived notions about it as well but she seemed like a uh genuine person like she seemed like she that's just kind of how she is very bubbly and friendly so i i enjoyed the experience but uh i wouldn't say i've noticed a different a change in lifestyle at all really a couple more followers on instagram that's about it i listened to the one after yours and mm-hmm. She wasn't giggling that much. She was more like, "Yeah, oh, yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah." yeah. There was, I mean, there was laughter there, but it wasn't genuine. Sure. Genuine. Is it genuine? She wasn't sliding genuine? off her. It wasn't sliding off her seat. It was, Correct. It, was, yeah, it wasn't gotcha. waterworks down south. Yes. No. Okay. Exactly. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure that that appearance has brought some clout chasers into your life, and that's my transition directly into your one-on-one interview with Tom Myers. What? <laughs> Uh, we won't speak ill because it was yeah. nice of him to come on, but Jesus Christ! All of a sudden, I, he sees you on the show, and the that phone was a little. We, I didn't. I, I'll, I'll admit, 
you're not far off. I did notice that where I was, because I asked him like, "What made you reach out?" We made fun of him for yep. so long, <laughs> and he he kind of like angrily declined to come on a year ago. It was and a I prick. was like, "What made you change your mind?" And he's like, "I saw you were on Lauren Compton's podcast." I was like, "That's well, an odd. That's an odd time to choose to come on." Because yeah, I'm sure he thought it was a, a bigger show than it is or something. I don't know. <laughs> You know what it was? It was my YouTube algorithm that got me here. I saw it. It's like, yeah, buddy, come on. You're just looking to hop on the gravy train while it's still flowing. But, but I'll, no, I'll I give him credit because I told him I don't think he quite realized the show he was on. And when I said that we had an episode entitled Tom Myers, the world's worst comedian, he, he took it in pretty good stride. I could tell him that he was surprised by it, but he was a good sport about it. Yeah, he's come off as a prick on a lot of this stuff, like prior to that. But you literally at one point said, like, "Yeah, we we did a show that just shit on you the entire time." He's like, "Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks, yeah. Thanks for having me." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, for those of you who aren't subscribed to BlindMike.net, you're a terrible person if you're not, and you need to. <laughs> It's pretty simple. Ten dollars a month gets you to executive gearhead level. I would like to have another. Um, uh, blind mind project once a week but that's that's a pipe dream i've already told you that once before so think about it midweek I, would really be nice I, I just do too many shows i'm there's too much of me already so <laughs> i'll have Fair. to figure it out because i want to do more uh bonus why you laughings too but there's just like i'm on a show in some form pretty much every day <laughs> so, so i figure there's no way people want more of me you know well, you'd be wrong, Mike. You'd be wrong. We're here <laughs> well, for you. you We're thank in your corner. We're in your corner. Now, I so I wrote down some KMS notes prior to this because I we always like to kind of round it out with a little bit of KMS chatter. My two okay. notes here read uh, McFuss Daddy out, Beanbag Ron still in. And the other one reads Coleman made up that story about his first grade teacher. So <laughs> I'll touch on both of those very briefly. McFuss Daddy has left our, our network parcel and he's moved over to the Menors Network. And I look at it this way, and you can tell me if you disagree. Okay. When Hitler was reigning over Nazi Germany, there were still people in Nazi Germany who were good people that didn't really want to be involved with his antics, but they just found themselves there. That's kind of how I see McFuss Daddy. He's working with Hitler of sorts, he doesn't have the height of Hitler. But he's just kind of there. So I'm not totally out on him. And Beanbag Ron has stuck around. He is still in the group chat. And shout yeah. out to Beanbag Ron for that. The opposite of how people uh, kind of predicted that, right? Very much so. Yeah. yeah. They, Beanbag Ron was not a fan of mine. They had a week of a month of hate dedicated to me uh, way early on, which was an honor. Now that we're friends, I'll say that. That was an honor. Yeah, I didn't think he would stick around and McFuss would leave. But such is life you can't hold grudges you can't be four foot nine live in a different country and be an asshole you know what i mean yeah i'll say uh mcfuss daddy is a top tier clug maniac oh over yeah on, uh, over we've on talked about it and I, so i asked him today uh before we started quincy i i said i'm going on with the drips tonight is there anything that people should know and he gave me a very political answer which seems unlike him a very polished oh sort of he's like well, you know i love all the people there but i'm doing what's right for me it was kind of a you know it didn't feel like a very mcfuss daddy answer i was surprised by it so i don't know what's going on i'm a little suspicious about it um but it might be that mcfuss daddy's a very nice guy he sees what's happening to mentors and he kind of feels bad you know that that could be an element of it true it's tax season too so maybe he got killed in taxes this year and he's going to use this time spent with mentors and his team as a tax write-off for a charitable donation it could be that now is uh you compared mentors to hitler was that your experience over there did you have any run with him in in particular no listen i've been super fortunate throughout my career uh from startup to now um no one make fun of that. I wasn't kidding it's not a, it, i'm kidding it's not a career but okay. i started with kirk and i'll die with kirk Drips in the office started of course, on. Yeah. Yeah. I've never I've never worked across the street. I've been on a couple of the Mike and the Minute fans hosted by BA, which is a really good product now, especially. Uh, but no, I've never really had too many run-ins with him. I did okay. his show once, the um Minna Fandom, which I think they've put on an episode, I think four or five months ago. Uh no, but no, not many direct dealings, just kind of seems like a prick. Okay. Uh, so my second point on that, uh, Coleman made up that story about his first grade teacher being drunk at a bar. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I didn't, 
Nowhere. I didn't get it. Nope. Nope. His, it was some girl was with her and said, I haven't talked to Coleman in years. Let's call Coleman. Didn't it just didn't sit right. Well, my question is why, why make that up though? Just to have something to say. Cause it's not an interesting <laughs> story. No, it didn't hit. It didn't hit no. at all. Yeah. It was called out pretty quickly on being a lie. <laughs> uh, speaking of being a lie, that'll be a fantastic transition. And I, I'm not going to go in far too much detail on this because you're in on Thursday with my, with my good friend, Mike Matnansky, it seems. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm sure you'll unpack this a little bit, but I think that I've listened to it three and a half times already today. <laughs> That was one of the best episodes of all time, in my yeah, opinion. I, I think that I, I was trying to think of this earlier. Of anyone that hasn't worked for the show at some point, I think Mick might have the best moments. Does that make sense the way I said that? Yeah, I agree. With you, you know, like if you take Clemmer, Carabas, Carano, Mutt, like stack up all their best moments mick is certainly in the running if not having the best like between the producer search the walkout even when i was in with him the um uh scream the, scream fest oh, no i don't oh i didn't even mean that yeah that that's another good one that's good yeah. um no i meant the the one where um he's talking about the brother leaving him two hundred dollars oh my god there was that and we talked about something else with the girlfriend and those two moments like uh, we're just so fun <laughs> to like riff on and go back and forth talking about what a psychopath he is. And, uh, you know, yeah, like, like you said, I'm sure we'll talk about it a little more on Thursday, so I don't want to get too much into it, mm-hmm. but he does, he does have some good moments. Now I'm sure he'll hear that and either oh, yeah. think that I'm insulting him in some way or that he's yep. owed a job or something, <laughs> but, but it's a cop. I mean, it is a compliment. <laughs> that's the beauty of, that's the beauty of Mick. That'll, that'll definitely be taken as either a slate or he'll walk in and be like, yeah, I listen to drips in the office. I heard Mike like Kirk, you're crazy for not bringing me on board. You're crazy. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, I wish I could remember the exact context, but when Mick came back in from the bathroom, they were they were talking about something and Mick was like, Well, why would I do that? And Kirk said, We weren't talking to it. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> He's one in a million. He's one in a million. But I think you're right too. From a, if you look at it from a percentage basis, too, like the amount of times he's been in compared to the wild moments, like Clemmer probably has more lined up because he was on like every week for over a year. Mick's probably only been on 12 to 15 times but there's always just something there's something yeah, insane i but if you, I, I would say if you took like the top three moments of clemmer and the top three moments of mick i would say mix are are more memorable i think yeah no i would agree because i can't even not nothing against clemmer but i can't really think of anything no, yeah I, I enjoy clemmer on right the show. Now. it's more more of a compliment to mick i think actually makes a home run hitter that's 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 the bottom line here but al did grow on me i hated al forever because i'm loyal i'm a loyal maniac but al grew on me seems like a nice guy well i think justin actually had uh i thought some good insight today Mm -hmm. where he started picking up on the fact and you notice this more as the show went on that maybe al is a little nastier to mick than we are aware like the joy that he took when at the very end of the show when kirk started bringing up what was it um he brought up a couple of mick topics oh like the vegas podcast and there was one other one and you could tell al got real enjoyment laughing at that and that's when i started to think like maybe he's more of a dick to mick than than he's been letting on the previous two hours justin i do remember justin saying that it's a it's a good point too but especially with him saying that he bullied him growing up maybe there is something underlying there i mean listen he only got paid like 250 bucks for bartending a wedding like that's (laughs) kind of shitty (laughs) well that's where it's crazy that was it that was nuts in itself but yeah if we're just basing it on the podcast, then Al seems like a delightful guy, and I don't understand what that. But there might be. I think there might be more there. It seems like a real peach, but yeah, there's there's probably something more there. But I, I'm I'm excited to hear more of your takes on it on Thursday, and right. I'm excited to hear more about Mutt, who I heard maybe is joining the network, but doesn't really want to. I think he'd be a I think he'd be a star. Plus, we'd like to get him in the group chat. I think you're eligible for the network group chat now too. I'll let the boss man make that decision, but uh, it's a real hoot. Why well, don't yeah I don't understand Mitch Mick uh, Mutz <laughs> Mick uh, Mutz reluctance to uh, make like an effort to be involved in barstool in some way that's the main thing where Kirk's basically 
like doing all it can. I, you know, Kirk's not going to like literally hold his hand, but like saying to Portnoy, give this guy a job is about as much as he can do. And Mutt doesn't seem to give a fuck about it. It's very strange. He said it today where he was like, if you put it, even if you put out a 10 minute show every week, like the lunatics like me and Ziggy and all those guys will quote tweet it to like Dave probably 150 times a day. Once something's in Portnoy's brain, there's a good yep. chance in it coming to fruition, you know? Yeah, no, and it, even in the comments when he was doing the David and Marilyn thing, he's like, why is everybody saying hire Mutt? Like, he's, it's fresh. <laughs> Mutt, if you're listening, come on, join us. Be great. We'll have you on the show, the whole nine. It'll be really well, exciting. Yeah, but I, I, I'm honored that I got the ask, but as probably your biggest fan, why isn't Mutt in this seat tonight? Listen, I... I I don't I don't necessarily disagree. My friend John and Warren reached out to me and said I got blind Mike lined up. My face okay. lit up like a Christmas tree. I'm not going <laughs> to well, complain. I that. What I was planning <laughs> on doing while John was away was I was just going to do I was going to do a solo show where I made up stuff about um, what's going on in Iran to infuriate people because I don't know any of it. <laughs> and I, I was like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I was going to break down um, the Houston Rockets starting lineup. I'm not a Houston Rockets fan, but I was just going to try to clog the airways for a half an hour. It wouldn't have gone well. As you can see, I'm not a born host, so I, I don't think it would have gone great. But when John sent that message, I was elated, Mike. I was elated. Okay, but yeah, well, we'll, Mutt, Mutt will be. be next. Mutt will be here um, next week. Oh, good. All right. All right. <laughs> I, yeah, that, coming I haven't confirmed that yet, so I really hope that that bullies him into it a little bit. But um, <laughs> I, I, I hope that works. Um, now, we're generally about a 40 minute show, 30 minutes, 35, somewhere in that range, Mike. So listen, I'm going to I'm going to put a I'm going to put a bow on all this. I was going to make right. a pumpkin reference, turn this into a pumpkin, but I don't think that works. That's a callback. No, um, yeah, not quite, but I like where your head's at. Yeah, the ADD kicks in like at the 30 minute mark and it really turns into a disaster. But um Mike, thank you for joining me tonight. This was never in my wildest dreams, I'll tell you that. Absolute treat. I'll be there on Sunday in the live chat chatting up with Electrofra. She she's moved over to KMS. Have you noticed that? She's in all the YouTube chats. That lady seems wild. Oh, no God. offense to her. She's great. Oh yeah. Rick. She's one of the uh, today in the YouTube chat, she was like uh, the intro sucked. I could really help Kirk out. I'm like, I don't think you understand what you're yeah, doing here. Think... Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, she's something else. Everyone but shut up. <laughs> <laughs> just stay in your lane, lady. Stay yeah, in your lane. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, Mike, thank you for thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, it was well, nice it was chatting pleasure, with you. Thanks for having me. Blindmike.net. Subscribe. Where you? Why are you laughing? Blind Mike Project. That thing with Carl, who I'm a little iffy on. Um, <laughs> Who are, socials, yes. Who are these socials? Who are these socials? Yes, yes. Uh, Carl, I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'll, I'll get there. But as always, folks, thank you for tuning in and lights out. <laughs> <laughs>